Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we wanted to take a look at what's been happening with uh, gold uh, and the price of gold, uh, particularly in this past week and past uh, few months. So we've kind of had two peaks, uh, recent peaks in the past year or so. One uh, was on 3.9 of 22. Um, and you can see here, uh, price of gold was almost at 2,075, uh, maybe a little more, but you had a quick uptick and then a quick down. Uh, so heading into April, uh, prices basically fell. Uh, you can see here on the MACD as well. And then there was kind of a turnaround uh, right here around uh, April 7th or so. So you can see on the prices here that uh, pretty much the MACD had its lowest level back here uh, in 2001, uh, January, March, April uh, area. Um, and we are pretty much back in that same area, maybe even a little bit lower um, right now. And prices have certainly been falling uh, for quite some time. Um, certainly major drop uh, from uh, start of the year, but also right in here. So you can see around uh, August 12th or so. Now you can see an interesting sign on the MACD. You see that there's definitely been uh, lower highs uh, and lower lows on all of these points. Um, now on the MACD, it shows slightly different divergence. You can see that uh, this most recent uh, uptake was actually a little bit better. Uh, than the last uh, uptake that we had here, um, barely made it into positive land, uh, and then kind of got flushed down uh, after that. Now, the long-term chart, chart kind of tells you going back uh, many years here that um, just in 2019, we were at about 2166 uh, for the price of gold, uh, and then you can see up here, we're at about 1790. So a major drop in the price of gold only pretty much happened one time in history, uh, and that was right around here uh, in uh, 2011, 2012. Uh, and you can kind of see this here. So you can see that was basically October of 2012 uh, is when things started to drop. So that was one time in the history of the price of gold. Um, right now we're kind of at a lower end and we are perhaps even breaking that price range. So keep in mind that the value of gold goes back thousands and thousands of years, um, but this is kind of my uh, chart for that uh, just in the last, uh, I guess, 30 or so years. Technically, I guess this is about 50 years. It's kind of hard to see on this chart, but this goes back to uh, the 1800s here, which is kind of interesting. And you can see it was uh, $20 or so per ounce uh up into uh the 1930s uh and then it jumped up in price to about 33 dollars an ounce 34 dollars an ounce uh and then uh... so it wasn't until about the 1970s um which was most of the chart that we were looking at before that the price of gold really started to take off uh at least according to the data that we have here so it's really hard to know prior to the 1970s anyway the data I mean, back then, uh, how do you really measure price of value of gold uh, accurately, uh, you know, around the world? Uh, so here's another graph to kind of compare this with price of gold. You can see um, relatively flat uh, price of gold uh, up until about uh, 19, 1972. You see that it kind of goes way up um, here on the price 1980s. Let me zoom back out so you can see. So that is 1981, um, and you can see that it's kind of dropped and even dropped uh, throughout everything until 2002. Um, so from 2002 onward, price really skyrocketed um, up, and then you can see 2012 um, being kind of the height of that uh, initial, um, let's see here, where is that? Yeah, so that's right in here, and that would be 2012. So it's really only been in the last few years that we see these skyrocketing prices again, uh, starting in around 2019 or so, um, and then skyrocketing up here into uh, 2022 and 2020, 2020. So it is important to realize that uh, the gold is currently economically unsustainable. And by 2050, we're essentially going to be pushing through these limits of what we can find on our earth. So there are different sources that say, you know, how much gold is there left? Um, and 
uh, just different numbers on that. So numbers are not necessarily certain, um, but the U.S. Geological Survey does try to estimate that. So of that, most of the U.S. Geological Survey, a lot of sources are saying here, about 50,000 tons is left. And when you compare that to how much uh, already has been mined, uh, almost 200,000, you know, we are kind of already have mined most of the gold that is available. So who owns the most gold privately? Um, you can see that basically Indians have the most, followed by United States, Germany, Italy, France, China, and Russia. Now, unbelievably, almost 40% of the world's total production of gold has been mined in South Africa. Um, we should probably even look at that mine uh, if we can find it. Um, so that area is basically right here in South Africa. If you had uh, some ideas and you wanted to know precisely where that is, uh, but basically it's right in here uh, and as we zoom in it's kind of difficult to tell exactly where the mine is um, but there's a couple locations uh, that we could uh, maybe guess so if you do a search for mines uh, it's basically this area called the uh, water strand basin uh, you can see that this uh, gold area is the area where they're saying there's mainly uh, gold um, but you can see the city right in the center here so it's a little bit hard to see exactly where this is, but you can see this area here, uh, Vanderford and the Watershed Basin, and then Evander, the city over here. So you can see this is Evander, this is the uh, Veterskun uh, area, and Johannesburg up in here. So this whole basin area is preloaded um, with gold. So gold is primarily found in quartz rock uh, here, uh, if you're aware of that. So the world's biggest mine, however, is located in Uzbekistan, and it's the largest in terms of production. It does over 2 million ounces of gold per year, which is unbelievable. So unbelievably, the number two uh, place, um, excuse me, here, uh, the number two place only produces 1,665 ounces ounces per year so I'm not sure um, what the difference is here but that's quite a less amount I'm sorry that's not a whole lot less because it's K ounces right here so the biggest mine in the world is this one here um, in Uzbekistan you can kind of see as I zoom in uh, just how big this mine is uh, sorry it takes a little time to load some of the images um, but this image kind of gives you the best overview of what's going on uh, in terms of how they do this mining here. So similar size, uh, but quite a bit different is this one here in uh, Carlin, uh, Nevada. Um, and you can see uh, basically as we zoom out here where that is, um, relatively speaking. Sorry, it's taking a little bit to load this, but... Uh, you can see it's kind of outside of California. So kind of up in this region here. So the third largest, this is kind of the size of the mines, relatively speaking. Third largest one is in Russia. Um, take a look at that here. Uh, kind of interesting look at this. They look like they really dig in certain areas. Once you get to the 2,000 square, 2,000 feet area, you can kind of see they really dig deep here. Um, kind of section out a certain area. It is quite an operation. It's almost its own little town. You can see, uh, if you zoom in here, you can see that they got little houses uh, for people to stay at, it looks like, uh, and some interesting uh, things, uh, but interesting just to see nonetheless. And even a little grocery store looks like. So on a larger map, it's basically up in here. You can see there's almost kind of like a fault line or a, a river that runs through here. Um, but you can see it's basically right in here. Uh, so the next one is located in Dominican Republic. I can kind of see here where it's located. So I personally anticipate some of the uh, mining to be found on some of these islands. They're more volcanic and have uh, basically some interesting uh, geological uh, areas. So overall, pretty interesting mine here in the Dominican Republic. So. Heading off into uh, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, uh, you can see that there's like kind of some mountainous areas right in here, and they discovered a very large mine uh, right in this area. So you can see as we zoom in, uh, this area right in here um, is where the mine is. And as we zoom in closer, you can start to see some of the, uh, the, the 
hole essentially that they've uh, dug here. Now it almost looks like they've blasted uh, some away at some of the uh, ground here and kind of uh, it's almost avalanched into this area. Uh, you can see it almost looks kind of goldish in the ground. So interestingly, uh, Australia shows up here on this list, uh, not on the top, um, but in the number six spot. Um, and there's quite a number of large mining companies in Australia, but uh, the gold mine here um, is a little bit different. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting uh, this uh, link here with the coordinates and then selecting the uh, satellite view for uh, Google Maps. Kind of a really beautiful looking mine, a uh, really nice little lake here that you can see um, in some outsiding areas that they're also working on mining. So this particular mine is quite a bit outside of Sydney, um, but you can see kind of from space that already starts to show up um, as a pretty big uh, space spatial area. And this kind of gives you the main overview uh, for what's going on in that area. So. Uh, this next one heads us back to Africa. Um, now I'm surprised it didn't show up uh, the the one that it uh, said that was 40% of the reserves, but this one, uh, these are specific mines, maybe not areas, uh, but more like vast geographic areas, but this one shows up in the Congo, which is kind of interesting to see. Now this one, by a lot of means, is almost not in the Democratic Congo. It's almost in uh, over here in Uganda. Um, and uh, on the edge of uh, the area. Um, so this particular mine is quite interesting because you got this pretty large city right next to it. Um, most of the other ones were kind of pretty far away from everything, uh, showing this African mine uh, being uh, kind of a lot of people coming in uh, just to live in the area of the mine. There are some people that took uh, some pictures here of the mine and you can kind of see what it looks like a little bit. So quite a production, quite a facility. You can see they kind of bag up maybe the dirt here and then just go through it all. So it's just quite amazing uh, what goes on uh, just to mine the gold. Uh, so next is one in Nevada. Um, we're gonna try to just take a quick look at this one. Unfortunately, there aren't any pictures uh, inside the mine um, like there was in the African one. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite ones off of Papua New Guinea, uh, this tiny little island. Um, actually has a little mine and it has a coastal town. It looks pretty cool, um, but you can see that the mine is right on the waterfront here um, and you get about 2,000 feet. So it's a pretty large mine actually. Um, and then you can see kind of the town right in here. Not a super big town, but uh, but pretty cool little spot. Uh, maybe not no images shown here, but uh, cool to see the little location. So there is another one in Mali here, uh, but uh, it's kind of hard to see and doesn't show up uh, very visibly on the uh, map. So I, I'm gonna kind of skip it here. But in general, there's a lot of there's a lot of mines out there, and there's actually not a lot of data um, showing where they are, which ones are larger. For instance, we saw that that one in South Africa was maybe one of the largest ones in the world, and yet doesn't really show up on this list um, because these are maybe just specific mines so there's maybe areas uh, versus uh, like actual single mines uh, so it's kind of a debate between uh, these locations but certainly these mines are some very large mines uh, most of them being around at least 2,000 feet uh, or more on each side um, so again you know the data just really doesn't really show up uh, for China there was that one mine that we saw in Australia, the one that we saw in uh, Russia, a couple mines in the United States, but apparently China has the most gold uh, in terms of reserves. Um, so it's just difficult to know um, what these numbers are and, and how accurate they are. So you can see in this list, uh, the deepest mines, uh, many of those are located in South Africa. In fact, quite a number of them you can see uh, a lot of them being about 2.5 miles, one mile, uh, one mile or more. So that's a long ways to be underground and most of them are looking for gold or uranium or other area, other precious metals. And you can notice that most of these are still active. Um, there's a couple of them, the deepest ones that have been uh, closed. And in terms of revenue, you can see uh, you know, some of these mining companies don't even show up. Uh, they're not even listed on the exchange. BHP is, Rio Tonto is, uh, Valley is, and so on. Um, but 
many of these are uh, some uh, interesting companies uh, located in China, as you can see, um, and then one in India as well. So you can see in the 1970s, uh, a lot of the gold was coming out of South Africa, and that's been declining uh, ever since. And you can see China basically being the leader in uh, producing gold right now. So it's still pretty interesting to see this map so you can kind of see China being uh, number one, United States, uh, and then also here over in uh, uh, Peru, uh, South Africa, Australia, uh, and uh, so on. So going all the way back to price of gold, um, since that's what the original topic is primarily about uh, and trying to understand what the price is, um, you can see uh, that basically on a logarithmic graph, um, most of the move happened between 2001 and I can't really see this here. I'm going to move this thing here. And basically, uh, well, 2001 and right around here, which is 2011. Now, if I switch this back to a regular graph, you can kind of see that you know, on a log end of the graph, uh, this price movement here actually has not been as significant as you might think um, when you switch it back to logarithmic. So in recent years, although there has been big fluctuations, um, it hasn't been like the 2001 uh, to 2011 uh, jump. So I thought this was interesting here, what it said in Wikipedia. So the total sum of all the gold uh, above ground is only 71 feet by 71 feet by 71 feet. So giving you some idea of what 200,000 tons is, it's just a 71 foot, uh, which is pretty big uh, amount of gold uh, by 71 feet by 71 feet. So of the new gold produced, about 50% is jewelry, 40% investments, and 10% industry. So in terms of prices of the gold, again, uh, you can see here that you know, we, we have been dropping quite a bit uh, in the price of gold, um, but according to the MACD here, uh, we can't really drop too much further. Uh, we can maybe drop down to here, uh, which would be on the pricing range. You can kind of start to estimate that uh, maybe at the 15, 1550s level. But that would be the absolute worst uh, that we could get. Um, I mean, of course, it could go even lower than that. Um, but at least according to the indicators here, that's what this would say. So right now, we're at a more than two-year low. Um, so this is uh, going back quite a number of years um, and even further back, uh, potentially. So from the RSI, you can see uh, that the price of gold definitely has been dropping. There's been a couple of upswings here, pretty high upswing. Um, back in 80, 809 um, on RSI, you can see. So most of the indicators are still on the lower side of things. So you can see here on the stochastic indicator um, that we have even crossed here and it does even indicate that it could even go potentially lower. Um, maybe not too much lower, but a little bit lower here. So the daily volume has been increasing in uh, futures contracts uh, for gold. You can see uh, almost uh, getting about twice uh, what it was uh, here in September 15th. You can see there's uh, quite a large volume. So there's basically about 252 companies or so uh, that are considered basic materials. Uh, you can add an industry for gold specific if you want. A lot of these uh, do a lot of different things, and some of them are foreign traded only, uh, or uh, you know OTC markets. Uh, so you see uh, BHP, Rio Tonto, uh, and uh, Valley being some of the larger ones. Um, if you add industry of gold here, you can get uh, gold specific, and then you can click find stocks. Uh, you get only about twenty four or so, but. Um, New Mount Corporation being the largest one uh, specifically, and Barrick Gold. And uh, Wikipedia also has a list uh, New Mount Corporation, Barrick Gold being two, three, uh, Franco Nevada, and so on. Um, you can see some other ones here uh, as well. 
So it's surprising to see how many of these are actually in Canada as well. Um, you also see a couple in South Africa, Australia, and Russia, and the United States. Uh, so we're just about ready to close up here. Um, but you can see uh, gold in inflation adjusted consumer price indexes by gold by 2020, essentially 2020 standards. So you can see uh, we got a price of 2846 uh, back in 1980s. So that was pretty amazing price. So you can see it's actually 850 here, um, but uh, in terms of gold in nominal US dollars. So, uh, but basically that was quite a high uh, piece, point uh, for gold. So I hope you've really enjoyed this study of gold. Uh, let me know what ideas you have. Uh, if you have some uh, new information or things that you think I might have missed, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to talk with you more about it in detail.